All right. All right. <laughs> this is it. Check one. Check two. Welcome to the Cannabis Coffee Hour with your host, me, Rob Cantrell. We're coming at you live via the internet across the country through electrical wires. I have a great guest. I have some tea. I have some herb. Uh, one of my good friends from when I started in San Francisco, uh, he's a great writer. He's been on Conan O'Brien. He was the original writer of the marijuana logs. Uh, he, he works on TV projects. He does stand up in the Bay Area. He was super legend when it comes to stand up. Please give it the one and only Mr. Tony Kameen. Hey, Robbie. Hey, Tony. What's up, Rob? How you doing? I'm doing good, man. How are you? Good, good. Thanks. Good. Medium uh, good. And you're coming from Burbank. Burbank. No, California. I'm not coming from Burbank. I I'm always... coming from. I moved there. I moved right before we moved in 19 to Glassell Park. Oh, Glassell Park. Is I'm that... up on a hip called Adams Hill. It's just us, hawks, skunks. Oh, awesome. You're going back to nature, Tony. Yeah, we have a little we have a little undeveloped hill at the top, so it's nice. That sounds beautiful. Yeah, it's cool. Nice. Uh, what was the last uh, wild animal you saw? Uh, well, we see skunks every night. We have like a highway in our alley, like our little side, you know, it's they're just like 20. Sometimes we have little cameras there and they 20 night sometimes go back and forth. But we saw a brutal one the other night. We saw a coyote ripping up a cat in our backyard ripping up a cat bed and we don't have cats but the neighbors cats love our yard because we have like 30 big trees and they always come hunt so there was a cat sitting in that thing like just like 20 minutes before on camera we have it all on camera before this coyote is just ripping the shit out of this dog bed that we have back there old dog bed so it was like that was pretty that was like a little close to home you know a coyote just in my backyard tearing up a thing that all these animals could easily have been in like just you know all the time so yeah that's it but it's nice because it's nature you know it's good it's, when you live in la it's a nice any big city to get feel like you're out of it so that, that that's what's cool about being up here oh, that's what's awesome about being up there. you just threw so many things at me tony and uh because uh the i'm pro cat i got a cat during the pandemic and it's a straight Brooklyn alley cat. Like it, it doesn't listen to me at all. It's uh -huh. like pigeons on the roof. Cat doesn't give a shit. We, uh, well, I got a, even, a, I got a jazz cat. He just hangs out in turtlenecks with an upright bass all the time. Oh, you got Still a North Beach. Weed. Oh, nice. Oh, he yeah. does poetry night and you and Carol do a little Yeah, he's slap. doing some slams and the upright bass, you know, it just takes up a lot of room in the house, but it's okay. <laughs> Oh, jazz cats are the best. Yeah, they but, love uh, tuna. They love tuna, the jazz cats. They do love some uh, hot tuna. Uh, yeah. Great Bay Area band. But uh, but the coyote went in there and sat. Yeah, you just got to watch out for coyotes. He's just tearing it up on all the, there was just like the foam filling with just all, it looked like it snowed the next day because there's just foam everywhere. I was like, oh, that could have been very easily cat guts. So it's some, I, Whenever I see these cats every morning, there's sometimes three cats. They, they bird and lizard hunt in our backyard. I'll, we got a crazy backyard. This, that's why we moved here. It's just nuts. House is very modest, but the house, it's crazy. I love it. So it just attracts all this wildlife back there. You know, it's nuts. So I, I'm always like, oh, when I see the cats in the morning, oh, you made it another night, you know, you made it in the jungle. Yeah. Are now, are you and Carol, are you pro skunk or anti skunk? That You said 20 skunks. No, no, army 20, 20 back and forth. It's probably oh. just one family, but they keep going. But uh, they just had some kids and they're real small and they're so cute. Uh, I'm, I was at first like, oh, what skunks? Like it's day one moving in there are so obvious, you know, because like I said, we live on the hill, we're between the top of the hill and the bottom. So we're a highway of skunks every night. So what dummy got skunked very early on. <laughs> this is uh, Tony's infamous dog, who's the cutest little uh, White schnauzer. schnauzer, 14 year old uh, old lady schnauzer now. Oh, my goodness. I she know. She comes running in the house like something. And we it was just a little baby one got her. 
but she, and then she just comes in like running out like the zoomies, you know, crazy. And then, then rubbing it all over the carpet, trying to get off her. So, <laughs> and I didn't mind it. Cause it smells like weed a lot. It does. Yeah, man. Uh, so, so you're saying that you don't really smoke as much flour anymore or do you Tony or, you no, know, my lungs are just, just destroyed from so much. I, I just get the coughs. So you I think you've even seen me like, I just get, yep, I have. Uh, so coffee where people are, are you okay and my eyes just get red and weepy so I just turn to edibles you know I just no, no. and then so I have uh, some vapes too um, oh that's perfect yeah so between the two of those also I stopped drinking so the edibles really help uh, my mood because you know it's like it's so fun to get get out of your normal state of mind once in a while um that's how I, I talk about with this podcast is that I think I used cannabis to dodge drinking and, and hard drugs. It was kind of like uh, it's a, a way gateway to... off. It's a gateway <laughs> off. It's a great way off, you know, and I hate to judge anybody and to each their own because partying is fun at the end of the day. Whoa, West Coast. <laughs> West Coast. Sorry. sorry. Uh, you are. We'll get back into your wildlife situation because you're out there, you know, right at the edge of the, the universe, which is California. But uh, yeah, what kind of coffee are you drinking today and, and what kind of herb are you enjoying these days, Tony? Well, I'm drinking. A machine that changed my life is the Nespresso machine. Uh, it's just like it's just like that funny, funny meme with George, George Clooney's Nespresso. And some fat old guy is the is the K cup carrying guy. It's this is so uh, it's so it's 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 changed my life. You know, it's just like this, 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 these Nespresso pods. Do you guys have Nespresso? Uh, I was this is what's been going down in my world. I was going French press so hardcore. That's great. French press is great. And then I was eating a lot of pepperoni. Right. Every weekend we were doing pizza Fridays. Did and you guys I, get a pizza maker? No, no, just good Brooklyn pizza. That's right. Oh, that's right. I forget you live in. You still live in the same place? Yeah. Well, I live over on Park Slope now. On what? My old hood. Yeah, you're. I live like I walk by your old joint all the time. Oh my gosh, that's great. Yeah. Next time you guys are around, but uh, I got high cholesterol. Last time I went to the thing, the doctor was like, "Yo, you got to cut out the espressos." And, oh, uh, and I thought meat. you said. I got high with cholesterol and I thought cholesterol was some Brooklyn rapper. <laughs> yeah. So you got, you got a high cholesterol ping, huh? Yeah. I had got a high cholesterol ping. So I wigged out and not wigged out. So I just been changing up everything. So I have been doing filtered coffee. So I got a Chemex. He said, if I do a paper filtered coffee is the best thing. So I've been doing that. And then I've been doing a lot of teas. Yeah. You know? That's but I a, love espresso. I mean, espresso is delicious. It's like chocolate, you know, ice. Well, I think Nespresso is is some brand. I don't I don't it's not as it's not espresso. It's like some kind of in between. I think it's close to Nespresso, but it's real good. Uh, but it's funny, guys, our age, we got to talk. We can't talk about sex and drugs and rock and roll. We can still talk about rock and roll. But now it's like tea and health <laughs> and that's it. Because you 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 have to you just hear about so many people at our age having heart attacks and passing away early. Yeah, totally, man. It's like, uh, you know, I, I mean, not to get the body's a temple after a while and you have to just. Uh, you just have to just watch it the older you get, but I kind of dig it. And uh, I think with COVID, it, the timing's good, too, because you got to got to watch your shit anyway. Um, yeah, it's uh, and think and, and, and it's funny just because like right when COVID, luckily for all of us, Right when COVID hit, there was a, an influx of people who thought they were doctors. So that really helped out everybody. The internet was just, uh, hel as every day, the internet helps us out and destroys. It's so funny, like, when, it, when the internet first came around, it's like, oh my God, you could just put any question in and it'll be answered. It'll be, this is going to be the best tool for good. And now it's just like ruining everything. I know. Uh, I was writing a joke. I it didn't really hit, but I was like, uh, you know, social media is kind of like uh, it's kind of like you're battling for fame or uh, mental illness all at the same time. Yeah, it's crazy. 
it's either you're going to get insane or you're going to get fame. You know, it's like uh, it's pretty crazy out there. But at the same time, it's there's good things and we can zoom cross country. I can catch up with you, Tony. Uh, oh, yeah. It's just it's just funny how me- human nature will take even something and how quickly it gets corrupted, you know, no matter what it is. Yep. Anyway, yep. enough of the negative. You yep. look great. Thank you, brother. You do, too. You're living in Brooklyn. You're watching your cholesterol. Yep. Getting my 10,000 steps in every yeah, day. That steps is like old people's drugs. It's like, I got to get, where's my steps coming from, man? I got to get some, this, someone's, someone walked on these steps. They're not pure steps. steps. These are good steps. You And you equate it into like little things like, oh, that's not bad. I'll go do that. I can get my steps in. I'll go. Yeah, something it. bad happens like, oh, but I got to do that. All right, I'll get my steps at least. Yeah, go up and down these things. But at least, I you we, know, I, I'm all about pumping blood through the heart. But at the well, same I was, time, as you still got to live and rock and roll a little bit, as you know, Tony. Yeah, you know, I was a, I, I go up and down with being fat. As you know, I go up and down. I think last time you saw me, I was up there in the weight. Yeah, I've seen you. I've seen you in all phases, but you're looking great at this one. Yeah, uh, I lost like we all go through 100, crazy, down crazy. 120 pounds. Holy uh, shit. That's amazing, Tony. That's a miracle. But it's like four years, you know, three years or whatever. But like you said, this walking is crazy. We live on these hills and it's the hills are the, they're horrible when you're doing them, but they're great for staying alive. Yeah. Same, same. I live on the third floor and I bitch and moan sometimes, but then I'm like, I think this is helping. Me oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, missed it. My I, heart. I, 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 when I moved from out of New York to California, I, I really got gained a lot of weight because I wasn't walking as much, you know? Yep. I, yep, I've been through that scenario. And I wasn't nervous about staying alive and making it in the city. That's the anxiety New York gives you burns off a couple pounds a day. Yeah, just fearing for your life and getting fearing run over life, or stabbed by a rat. Stay out of this shit, you know. Uh, you got to dodge. You got to keep it moving. Number one you thing. Dodge and weave. Dodge and weave. Not all stop day. and frisk. Dodge and weave. Dodge and weave. And now it's getting dodge and weed. It's getting fully legal, dude. Up on 7th Avenue is like the best dispensary and they have like great California. There was a lot of sketch out here that was bumming. Oh, you guys have dispensaries already? It's dispensaries. That's that's pretty new, right? That's kind of new, brother. It happened probably. 7th Avenue, that's pricey real estate. I know. And it's killing it. (laughs) It's my old street, 7th Avenue. Seventh Avenue, they you know they got that Indian place, they got the Mexican place, they got the yogurt place. You got no, you you got to say it right. It's got the bougie Mexican. It's got the bougie yogurt. I guess all yeah. yogurts kind of bougie yogurt. Yeah, uh, frozen yogurt. But now There's they no got vegan ice cream. Place. That's even one more dollar. They got vegan ice cream. What you that? But you, that you can yeah. get yogurt. But now they got like this twenty dollar vegan ice cream. That's a fun street though. That's like the epitome of like. Uh, whatever the word yuppie or uh, up, you know, upwardly mobile bougie, that, that, that street is just like so many upscale strollers and, and coffee places, but it was a, it's a fun place to live. It's a nice. It's a lot like where I grew up on Capitol Hill. You know, it's just like a lot of families, but also pretty city and the buildings are dope and the stores and restaurants are great. And there's like a lot of old school New York, but also an influx of, you know, uh, yeah, twenties to forties, beginning to have families and shit in the city. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's a great neighborhood. Um, in the park, I Prospect know. Park is the jewel, you know, of all. I of used to park. go every morning. I took dummy. I took dummy every afternoon. We would go to off, off leash hours on weekends and stuff. And oh wow, crazy, crazy. You should take your. They have they have cat off leash hours. You should take your cat. <laughs> I haven't it once it gets out, it, it, try, it broke out one time and it ran back like it's a okay. I, it definitely had a traumatic childhood. Like you could tell, like it was definitely scared uh, and would just literally just cut my hands up and just jar, jar, like doesn't listen to me at all. Now it's warmed up, uh, uh-huh. but, but it, it definitely had some trauma. Like uh, I think they found. Oh, its mother was an alley cat. That's what was the word was from the adopted service. The mother oh, was that's, that's a that's a urban feralish cat. Yep. Yeah. That it's, lives in the city. Yeah. And uh, in Brooklyn. <laughs> yeah. But I love it. I love cats. That are probably so gives cool. it a lot of character. Like it'll stay alive. Good. You know, like it's a, probably a survivor mom. Yeah. It's very strong and it loves all the attention. You know me, I'm just loving the cat and hanging out with the cat and getting away from social media. 
I'll just hang out and uh, rub its belly and uh, chill out. It's, does your, your daughter must love it, right? Oh, yeah, totally. It's great for the fam uh, to have a nice little cat. Uh, but and you have your dog and you were saying that it was you have skunks outside. Have you seen any? Oh, I, I, could, I could even get you. I might be able to even get you a live picture of her. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. If we can. Oh, and dumb. there she is asleep in her, one of her beds, one of her nine beds. Oh. Just kidding. That's not, they're not nine, but uh, yeah, there she is. 14. Her birthday's uh, this week, 25th. Oh, happy birthday, dummy. She'll, she'll be 14 years old. That's old. Yeah, that is old. Life expectancy is 13 to 16. So knock on wood. Yeah. One day at a time. Yeah. So, you know, she's totally, she's, she's deaf and she's, um, she's mostly deaf and she's, uh, her legs are going, but you know, we have, we've been, I mean, I built some stairs for her around the place and stuff. Oh, that is sweet. You know, like Arch did for Hoogie, you build some stairs for your. Just moving around is a pain in the ass. You know, I, uh, right now I'm having a little bit of back trouble and I've been really good about stretching out. And that's like an America's all about back pain and dudes are a, you know, dudes getting old. Well, I know you used to have some foot issues when we were hanging in New York. You're like, oh, I got some, I got bad feet. Or I got to get some shoes. And my foot's fucked up. Did, yeah. Were you playing? Did you, is this from sports when you were a kid or? No, just wear and tear. But I've been stretching out every day. But, uh, but yeah, the, the, the feet, uh, I go with Solomon's. That's what I talk about on this podcast. I love these shoes. Uh, Solomon's make ski boots, but they also make a great pair of shoes that you don't need inserts or anything. So if you got to do some major New York stomping, if you're mm -hmm. moving here, what I did was wrong, Tony. You know, I came to town. I just had a pair of Chuck Taylors. So Chuck I was Taylors. Chuck Taylors, stoned out of my mind, tw you know, 29 years old, three or four years into comedy, uh, you know, just, you know, dancing on clouds. And, uh, uh, don't be, you can't be dancing on clouds and Chuck Taylors. No, Chuck Taylor, uh, he must have led the league in broken ankles because uh, yeah, one of my favorite jokes is someone who was like, you get more support from a napkin. <laughs> right. Wasn't Not that the, something like that? Something like that. That's an oldie. Yeah, uh, that was uh, that was shared with all of America, I think, right? Yeah, was that one on TV. That one is on TV. That that's is a good one, and that's true. And they were like, "Did all the players used to play like this?" Like, I know, uh, because if you play one game, I can't even think about playing basketball. I'm more, I, I like to swim and I like to walk. But yeah, you and my brother now has he's a, he only is a couple years older than I am, and he's getting his hip redone right now. Just because I was just talking to my wife about I know four people are getting new hips, and it's just <laughs> like it's just like is is that a thing now, or you just everybody just gets rid of their hip and gets a new hip? Yeah, you know you've been doing it's like an iPhone. You know, it's like I want to get the new hip. Want to get the new hip? I want to stay hip. If does yeah. Apple if Apple makes it, I'll buy it. Just tell me. Yep. With the new update. Uh, I got the eye hip. <laughs> yeah, the, the new hip is, but the word on the street is to spin it on a positive. Uh, the hip in the knee, and what else can you get replaced? I guess the hip is the easiest. It's, it's things that have friction against them, I think. Yeah, like. I guess the hip is the easiest. The knee and something else is like the roughest. What's funny is us, when we delve into medical talk, because this we couldn't be further from uninformed people, like, well, what I hear at wool, you know, whenever you hear that, that when someone says, well, and it sounds like, wool, you know, you're in for a dummy report, like, well, what happens? Is, you know. You're going to get a lot of dummy reports. Uh, we already gave you one dummy report. And, you know, she's yeah, that, well, that's literally a dummy report on my dog dummy. <laughs> Uh, but the spin in another positive is that everybody's still smoking that, you know, that used to love to smoke and it's getting more and more legal. Or what do you say? I mean, Tony is uh, the creator of the marijuana law. One of three. What's that? One of three creators. One of three creators, along with uh, Doug Benson and Arch Barker. And they took this uh, play. They actually did a, a full play off Broadway with a director and a and a background and a box office. Yeah, theater set. We went we went uh, all over the world, Australia. We went to Amsterdam. 
That's it was fun. Very but cool. I got to be honest with you, Rob. I don't, sm I don't smoke weed anymore. No. This is like, you want sleepy time tea. This is your jam right here. Oh, yeah, dude. Some good old CBD, THC, just a couple. CBN, CBN is the sleepy is the sleepy device. That's, that's the sleepy magic. I know it does. I think that's one of the reasons I enjoy cannabis so much is that everybody's like, uh, I got all this. This is all sleepy, cushy punch. Yeah, it's, it's great to sleep on and it's safe. It's a lot safer than all those pills that are out there that are earlier generations and people get hooked on. That, oh, yeah, uh, it's, it's you have one. I have I take an edible before we sit down for TV or whatever. Um, I'm in bed by 11. Like I go to sleep within five, like, like within a minute, my wife said she's like, I can't count. Sometimes you turn off the light and I hear a sleeping sound like within seconds, like to work. <laughs> that's another thing about uh, getting older. That's cool is that you don't really toss and turn as much through the night you usually just lay down and just go down to sleep that's my that's my waking hours yeah it's just laying down to sleep my night hours are uh laying down to sleep and my day hours are laying down to sleep so i gotta i don't have much of a commute <laughs> yeah you go deep rem i'm definitely impressed when you can push yeah. like four hours of deep rem sleep you can literally like levitate the next day and you always hear about people who's like, oh, I, I have insomnia. I just feel so bad for them because not, it's so bad. When you can't sleep, man, it fucks up your next day. So I know, bad. I say that, and it does happen. Every night I wake up at 4 a.m., but that's why I do like my little one-hitter, and I'll hit it now and then to go back to sleep between 4 a.m. and 6 a.m. Sometimes I just, like, pop up. But they say that's part of the body process. And uh, So, Tony, thanks again. I wanted to kind of lean into music a little bit. And I just watched, I talked about it on the last episode, and I know you're from the Bay Area, but I just watched this documentary. I think it was on Hulu or Amazon Prime, but it's called A Long Strange Trip, and it's four parts. Have you, uh, I, were you ever a deadhead? Hold on, let me grab an axe here. <laughs> Tony does have a great collection. Uh, back when you were living in Brooklyn, your room was, oh, you still got it. I got a bunch of them. Arj Barker sent me a guitar out of the blue. I don't have it. It's in, it's, it's all, it's, it's in a case, but I just came home one day on my doorstep and there's a $2,000 guitar on my, on my door. I opened it up and it was Arj. He asked me what kind of, what would be my dream guitar? And I told him this kind of guitar. And like a, two months later, he showed up and he said, oh, it's just for being a good buddy and a tour mate and stuff. And I thought that was pretty cool. Oh, my God. That's amazing. Now, that guitar, you're, that's a, I, I was going to say a Rickenbacker. I don't know anything about guitars, but that's what Jerry had. And that's what ACDC. This now, is an early, this is what Jerry had before he started making his own, like, Wolf, all those crazy ones that he had from Olympic and whatever. Yeah. Uh -huh. Talk about that. Like in terms of you can make fun of the Grateful Dead, but in terms of a guitarist, great Jerry Garcia is like a legendary guitarist and with technical prowess. Oh yeah. This is a this is a Gibson SG. Whoa. That is the rock and roll. Gibson is the rock and roll it's brand. Angus Young. Popularized by Angus Young. Uh Clapton went through a phase in the 60s having him. Uh, Pete Townsend famously smashed one, was smashing them at uh, Woodstock. Does it go back to Chuck Berry? Did he have them, or would those nineteen? No, Chuck Berry had a three thirty-five, or a, you know, the the, the hollow body red thing. Is it still a Gibson or not? Gibson. What happened was there was a Les Paul. Everybody knows Les Paul. And he was like a virtuoso, and he had his own little company. Yeah, and then Les Paul, the, the Gibson company, they weren't selling it first, Les Paul. So they're like, oh, we're going to call this a Les Paul. And then Les Paul hated this guitar. So they went back to the old Les Paul, and this just became the standard Gibson. So it became SG for standard Gibson. The so SG. Les, Paul, Les Paul hates this guitar. But Angus, Angus Young loves it. So and it looks so cool. And yeah, I was just watching the documentary and he does rip on that. And that's has such a great tone. Yeah, that's uh, a, that was his early. That's his early. Then he had all these uh, crazy like Tiger and, and Wolf. You know, he had all these things custom made for him. That's tons of switching options and stuff. And on mahogany wood, like really good, like wood made bass. Like, yeah, they were beautiful. Oh, like crazy exotic woods, you know, like in 
Indian crazy uh, Brazilian Miyakoa and all this stuff. Yeah, real. Yeah. And I used to I used to have a, a strong when I worked at KFJC radio punk rock radio station, the dead were the opposite of all the punk rock stuff like like I used to assume and I could still make fun of them, long, boring passages. Yeah. 20 minute drum solo, drums in space. No, I don't think, still, I don't like drums in space. Yeah. Uh, but my friend Molly, I would always make, I was always ripping on the Grateful Dead. My friend Molly said, hey, I have these, you know, they're coming to Shoreline or they were coming, uh, they had John Mayer in the band now. It's Dead and Company. And for some, I don't know if she had free tickets, but they were, I was in town, San Francisco, and she had these psycho tickets. And it was, uh, it was around Christmas time when I was there anyway, working. It was a night off from the punchline. So I was all right, I'll go. And I, I thought it was great. I thought it was great. I thought I was like, there was moments of that uh, were really great. Yeah, D uh, Deadco uh, is out there and killing it. I got friends that like buy up the tickets and still follow them around. And they're watching yeah, the last raw. And then the next year we saw him at Shoreline where my mom was so I was like, yeah, I'll just, I'll, I'll, I'll be there anyway. Yeah, it's but, great music. But the, whole, but the whole thing, like half of, half of it is like the parking lot fun. The people you know, watching is, is the people is watching, and there's a whole you know, it's like a marketplace, it's like a mall of hippiness. Uh, you could get anything you want, uh, besides soap, as Tom Rhodes would maybe had a joke, something like that. Uh, besides soap and water and a clean shower, anything you want, uh, you know, <laughs> but not these new like millionaire tech uh, deadheads that are out there that can buy these tickets. Oh, now, I don't think oh, the, oh, the uh, parking lot is, is, isn't as savage. I did see him at RFK in 93 with Jerry playing that guitar. And I even remember like looking back and seeing him on that stage. And what's and you must have been, you, you were kind of young in 93, right? What were you like? Yeah, 18. And what did you? Did I was you my first year out of college and I was working at a Mexican restaurant. So it was a uh, Tortilla Coast. And guess who was working with me? This is a trippy one. Yo. A young Paul Ryan. Oh, wow. Yeah. A Whoa. Young, and I was a stoner at this Mexican when after last comic standing, somebody sent me some pictures of us at a house party. I didn't wow. know him that well. He was older and he didn't smoke pot. <laughs> but yeah, he, he was he also probably... nice. I mean, as, as much as the political landscape is divided right now, I will say, Personally, he was a nice guy. I don't remember him being an extra dick. Uh huh. He wasn't like, uh, Rob, you smell a little funny coming back from lunch. <laughs> he definitely gave me the looks. I'm going to have to write like, that up. Yeah. He definitely wasn't the guy you run. Tony's the guy you run to when you come to work high. You go over and hang out with Tony. Paul, I, I, got, the mouth, I got the mouthwash. I got the gum. Yeah. He's I'll not going to call you out. You, you won't seem high next to me. <laughs> But no, I love it. I have some more questions about your first, so it's your first dead show. Um, uh, at, what, at did, you, did you have a pre-existing, did, did, did you have a pre-existing like for them already? Or are you like an unknown? No, I was, I was a hater. I went to high school with a bunch of hippies and deadheads. So you were, a, you were like me, you went in, not, you were like, okay, I'll check this out. I've been hating on it for a long time. I'll at least give it a fair shake. Like that. For the party. And I think a lot of people did it for the party. This is after Touch of Grey. And this isn't, you know, Northern California. This is like DC. But uh, I still respected him and I still loved him. And I re even remember hearing St. Stevens the first time and loving that song. Like, uh -huh. you know, when you first get into classic rock, you learn about the who, and then you learn about the, uh, you know, you learn about the Rolling Stones, the Who, and Jimi Hendrix, and then somebody turns you on did to like you, St. Stevens and shit. Did you never, did you never learn about Led Zeppelin? Oh, I learned about Led Zeppelin, dude. I loved Led Zeppelin. I mean, Black Dog, all that. Led Zeppelin Four, I definitely absorbed hardcore. I don't know. Yeah, I guess the uh, DC area has a really good. You know, metal was big too. ACDC would always come to town. I always associate all the classic DC. rock stations were like really good, and they had a great progressive rock and great hip hop. And I always associate DC with like punk now with all, all with all those guys because like Dave Grohl and yeah, uh, you know, Minor Threat, all that DC stuff became those guys became legends. You know, 
super legends. That's like, uh, yeah, that and that was in my backyard when I was little playing soccer. Uh, you know, my buddy Nico, Nico actually dated like Ian McKay's sister for a brief while, like when they were like 13 or 14. He was That's in that. Great. Scene. It was like back then, like all the artists, weirdos all hung out to get there was before the Internet. And it was like, you know, that was like the all early these, 70s. All these are small, you know, everybody. And then they start getting factional. It's like, I like punk rock. It's like, I like, I like this kind of punk rock. Well, and then it kind of separates. Like, remember when comedy was just one thing? Yeah. It still is now, but now you have like alt comedy and you have this comedy, you have aggro comedy and you have Joe Rogan comedy. You know, you have all these all different- right comedy. <laughs> and you have, uh, yeah, then you have, uh, you know, you have gay comedy. It's always been there. But actually, you know, that's what I like about Gen X is like, that's what I was thinking about this morning is that uh, we don't really section off, you know, we, we kind of absorb everything and that you kind of took pride in having an open mind musically and in culturally, you know, and I think now everything's like so super segregated and just like internet's kind of got everybody in pocket and everybody's trying to monetize off of it. So, you know, the, the, it's harder and harder to be open-minded and open-hearted with, you know, stuff. Yeah, you get in your lane, you're like, you find something comfortable or something that re reaffirms your bias, your existing biases. You're like, yeah, there, those, that thing's right. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go feel good that I'm right because they're saying the same thing. <laughs> yeah. Well, let's get back to music. So you're going. To I know. Dead. I wanted to talk about the Grateful Dead a little bit. I steer away from you know that that show was great, and I remember doing nitrous for the first time and being on a half of acid and and drinking. And, so you you uh, came away a fan. You went in. You went in and not uh, knowing, and you came out like, oh, that was good. It was probably one of the best nights of my life at that time. Like you know, every other regular party, but then you go to a Grateful Dead show <laughs> at the parking lot, and you never been there before, and you just started smoking pot, and you just started, you know, having a you know kind of adult fun. I just remember after the show, there was this one truck just pumping disco, and had a bubble machine, and all these girls were dancing, dudes were dancing, and everybody was just still partying, you know, still having fun. And it was like a hot summer night. You know, I kind of was walking around the other night and everybody's complaining. But I remember being younger and going out in comedies that way. Like when it's a hot, it's kind of fun to go out at night when it's hot on the East Coast. You know, it's kind of got that. There's a certain energy. Well, there's things like things are happening in the, in the East. Things are happening out there. Yeah, it feels like yeah, things are. It's time to go out. You know, we've been all hiding out, sweating in our small apartments. It's time to go out. It's funny that you say, uh, like when you're a kid, you never complain about the weather, you're, except for when it rains and you want to do stuff. Because you never hear kids like, oh, this heat is crazy. And, then another <laughs> kid, and another kid will be like, well, the humidity is what really gets, you know, you never hear a kid. They're just like playing. They're too busy playing and enjoying it to be like, oh, this isn't ideal for me. I don't, I prefer it a little <laughs> yep. cooler, you know. Uh, what was your first rock concert, Tony? Uh, my first rock concert, I, I, I lucked out at, like you, like you, I my first one was just one for the books. It was just so crazy. And it wasn't even like drugs or fun. I was like 16 or 15 maybe. And my my older cousin, Robert, Bobby, he took me to see A Day on the Green. I don't know if you know what those are. Yeah, big the super green. concert. Big mega, big me all day thing in Oakland. It was at the Oakland, Oakland Arena, Oakland Stadium. Yeah, this was a legendary concert series. And this is like area. 79, so I was quite young. Uh, and let me tell you this lineup, it's insane. First band, uh, ACDC. <laughs> First opening? Oh my God. It might have been a mahogany right? No, that was later. It was like, it was, it was, and they had a song, they had a commercial and they had one, they had a hit, it was a long way to the top, if you're going to rock it. That was being played on Camel, Camel, whatever, the local Bay Area stage, Kaomi. And then the second band was Van Halen. And their first, their first stadium show ever. Oh, they man. kept saying it was a first stadium show. And then it was Mahogany Rush, Foreigner, Ted Nugent, and Aerosmith. And that was one show. And, and um... And I remember Aerosmith was my favorite band at the time, and they fucking sucked. They were horrible. <laughs> yeah. Because that, that was, that was um, at the height yeah, of their Once time. heroin gets in there, that's how the dead end, too, with Jerry. It's it like was coke and heroin. It was, um, uh, 
I remember it was just, it was so bad. And they said, they even said they were later, that it was like, that was the day Eddie Van Halen met Joe Perry and Joe Perry was rude to him. And later he apologized. He said, this kid was just so good. And I was doped up on Coke and I felt I was on the way down. And I remember I took it. I was just like, not very nice to him. And, and then Eddie Van Halen was like, yeah, he was a dick to me. And I love Joe Perry. But like, he didn't even turn around much to the audience. Joe Perry played with his back to the crowd. And we just saw Ted Nugent, who I didn't even love, but he came out and threw boulders. He came out in a lion cloth, like Tarzan, swinging on a rope. And then Aerosmith is just sort of standing. He's up. not on drugs. He's just a no, psychopath. No, he's way not on drugs. Yeah. He's, he's like the opposite of psychopath. That. Yeah. He's, he, yeah, he's got a bow and arrow. But what I was vibing on was, man, those first two bands, and you saw those guys when they were hungry. Oh, it was. In terms of rock and roll, like, it was, guys, it was like nobody I, better. I had never seen a show before. So Angus Young is just like all over the place. Bon Scott, oh. still with Bon Scott. Oh my and, God. And it, I, we, 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 you know, my cousin, we just got, we got real close to, I still have pictures from like a Kodak disposable, you know, the, the cheapest Kodak camera. Yeah, you had to take it to the thing and wait. A, yeah, a, yeah, and it, it came out, some of them were pretty good. Like I got Eddie like shredding and stuff. Oh, um, sure. It's, uh, and I just remember going, first of all, how loud it was. I was like, holy crap, it's so loud, you know, that. And then like, that was the beginning. I was just like, this is the best show. I've, this is the best thing I've ever seen. Cause this little unknown guy, you know, ACDC could have just said any name, but I had heard the name ACDC. It was and catchy. I kind of remember this. I'm a, you know, I was born yeah, the long, long way to the top. I was remember like, that album. Long way to the top. Of you. And it's the show is just crazy. Like he's just, you don't know who Angus Young is and you go to an, you go to a show. You're like, holy crap. What the, you know, when they, it, I was just like, this is insane. I'm like, well, this is crazy. And then there's a little, you know, a little break. I'm like, whoa, I'm talking about, this is, oh, that was great. You know, I was like, whoa, ACDs. And then Van Halen comes and they're just like their first outdoor show. And it was insane. I was, cause Eddie Van Halen was just crazy. And then David Lee Roth. He was going for blood. They were all going for blood at that time. He had these black and white stripe. There's pictures of it all over the internet. Black and white stripe hat. And he's just doing all the jumps and the screams. And I'm just like, and big and crowds band, love they, that shit. Those were the best bands. And it kind of, you know, the Mahogany Rush, whatever it was, or Pat Travers. They I were don't always, even know what the Mahogany Rush is. I don't know yeah, where it's those, like those guy, but guys it was, are. I think it was actually Pat Travers with Boom, Boom, Out Goes the Light. He had a big hit. Okay. Uh, yeah. And they were fine, too. And, and Foreigner knew all the songs. But, like, yeah. I was just like, this rock and roll business is crazy. Like, No, Van Halen, I'd say, is like seeing American Led Zeppelin. Like, I think Van Halen... But you know what I've been getting into, dude? I've been, and I wanted to talk about two different bands, but I've been going deep into Humble Pie right now. Oh, Frampton, huh? Yeah, Frampton and that other little guy. Steve uh, Marriott? Steve Marriott. I think Steve Marriott is one of the most talented rock and rollers in terms of playing good rock and roll music. Like, he's up there with, like, the Stones and the Beatles. Like, I've been getting into, with YouTube is crazy. I'll go, I, I, I watch Small Faces. I watch... All of his other bands and uh, well, that's why they, they are and him came together is just insane, like guitar wise. Yeah, and that's why the, the Stones have a small faces in their band now. They have Ron Wood who is in the faces. Oh wow! Uh, you know he they, so it's a very similar thing. You know, blues, yeah. English blues, English blues. But yeah, that's who Robert Plant used to follow around was uh, Humble Pie. And yes. they actually, a whole lot of love. They kind of did a version. It's all this Willie Dixon song, but they kind of did a version of, you need fooling. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Those yeah. are just classic. Yeah, so it's like a classic blues riff, but they kind of did it first. Um, and but then, you know, but Led Zeppelin, I'm not, I'm not saying, you know, they're biting on anybody. But, uh, but back to the Grateful Dead, I wanted to talk about you, Tony. I have a specific memory of uh, starting in San Francisco was so much fun and uh, in 99 and, and you know, those are hard times. But I remember one time it was I was living in the Richmond district and I would go to this uh, picnic table uh, like and you could see the Golden Gate Bridge and it was right behind Robin Williams's house. And I ran into you there one day. Do you remember that? I would go down at that table and write. And then you said, hey, I do the same thing. Yeah, I would, me and my roommate, Chris Hobbs, we'd walk around to, um, I think it's called China Beach. 
I think so. it was so long ago. I think about it. And I was like, Jesus, those were the most beautiful walls. And there was a little bench and a little golf course there. It was just so close to our house. And so it's like crazy beauty. You know, see the, the bridge and everything. So yeah, I, I'd walk out there. And there's redwoods. People don't understand. You can do this. And this is like in the city. You can just duck off and go through these wet red. There's woods. nobody there hardly. You know, it's like you're, you got, it's real. You got some solitude and it's beautiful. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I just remember you, uh, running into you there and uh, and then being and just seeing uh, how dope Robin Williams's house lived right there. Like, yeah, yeah, right oh. there with the heart. She had a little heart shaped gates. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, I don't mean to uh, bring it. But then watching Jerry Garcia, that was the other thing, not to go death, death. But the weird thing is he died at 54. Jerry. Yeah, Garcia. it's funny because I just think of him as always like old man. Now I'm older than that. It's like my no, he looked 200 and I then I looked it up and I was like oh shit he wasn't that old no but you, you know Mike from the punchline right Mike the old manager of Sacramento and then I do yeah he was Jerry's personal personal security guard for like personal minder for like years at the end Holy shit if you see Mike now he's Mike manages uh shoreline but he's got stories man he's I didn't even know this about him till recently and we sat down we just talked about it. he was he was the he, if you wanted to see Jerry, you had to go Mike, go through Mike because some people were okay, some people weren't, some people knew Jerry was on stuff, and you know he had his he had his insiders and stuff, and it was it's yeah it's sad because he just he just loved to get high and and then like he's a huge horrible junk food fiend you know just bad for your health you know I think him those guys you know. I, I, you know, there's good and bad in all of it, you know, the amount of debauchery and just, but also just the opening of psychedelics into American society, like some of the, all of it kind of happened and the music is so great, but he was like a dude that, you know, since 19 was on the road, Tony, like those guys just constantly played gigs. So he was well, like, a musician. he just never <laughs> learned how to like take care of himself. He was like a road comic that just lived off of shit food and had to, you know, even when I'm fucking in good shape, if I'm doing the road hard, it's really hard to eat right and kind of stay on your P's and Q's because your sleep is funky and your mood is. Yeah, all right. it's hard. It's hard. It's a, that's why it's people say it's a young man's game, because ideally you want to hang out after and you want to party or whatever. And then the reality is you got 6 a.m. flights, you got early radio, you got all this stuff. So you you can't really do both. And often you try to do both and you wear yourself thin and it's unhealthy, you know? Yeah. Yeah. But uh, I think nowadays things are going to get more, I don't know. I'm stretching and, and travel's getting better. Well, I like not, doing a little gig. the times. That's just us getting old. <laughs> uh, yeah. But, but now that I'm in the moment, I'm living forever. <laughs> yeah. That's what, this now, moment now, is forever. That's the way. And then, you know, we're all kind now of we're talking about yeah. Oasis because now they want to live forever over there in the Oasis band. I'm going to live forever. Yeah, that's a that's a pain in the ass. That's a lot on your mind if you're living forever. <laughs> I can't wait to die. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, um, even positive. You know, you, see, right. you can see why it's a good idea that people don't live forever, because like you talk to young people and they're they're already smarter and they're quicker and you're like, oh, my ideas are like a ship that are slowly turning and they're just so quick. I'm, I'm like, what? Maybe I like that. I don't know. <laughs> That's why I'm not, you know, the whole trans uh, trans things doesn't trip me out because I just can't get my I I don't I, you know, I smoke weed. Like, who am I to judge anybody what they do with their life? You know, I smoke a funky plant. <laughs> you know yeah, so, it's like, that's the hot that's does the hot that hot. sound normal to other people no that probably doesn't sound normal to other people except for elves and wizards you know yeah it's um it's i i just like it's none of my business you know so, like i don't know my business and i think we should have learned it with the gay uh rights movement like i kind of see it happening all over again I just don't want to be one of the old heads that's just like so judgmental. Yeah, I'm like, I, I don't know anything about it, but I'm not going to be judgmental about it because if that's what you want to be called, that's what you want to do. Hey, man, I've been called things I don't want. It's not cool. I'll call you whatever you want to be called. Yeah, I'll try. <laughs> try. I might slip up, but don't get mad at me. I'm trying. I know. I know. I'm a I'm a big dummy and uh, I slip up and I have to like be a little bit more mindful. It's, being a comedian is just hard. That's all it is. It's just hard to be funny and then also registering all the stuff that's happening. Also, but now, yourself, now is the Internet. Now everybody's a comedian. Everybody's funny. Everybody's a comedian. Everybody's funny. 
And it's hard, you know, it's like, and, it, and people are like, these young comics are good. And they're talking about whatever happened that day. They're talking about issues. And I'm a Muslim. And it's like, oh, man, I'm still doing jokes about cutting a lawn. Like, like, boring, you know, white form. <laughs> no, it, but just remember, the best guitarists are the blues guitars. Sometimes the simplest forms and the easiest forms. And Tony, you are funny. You will eternally be funny. And you'll be eternally my good friend. And I appreciate all you've done for me in my career. Anytime I've ever reached out. You've always helped me. And thank you for doing this podcast, man. We're going to wrap it up. It's at 40 minutes. Uh, we're going 20 minutes over the time I asked you to do, buddy. And uh, you just laid down some great stories. And I don't want to take too much. You didn't finish that. the Grateful Dead talk. <laughs> uh, the Grateful Dead was an amazing band. I give them all. And I just keep on learning about them. Right now, I'm listening to a lot of Morning Dew. I like uh, the personalities. And I love the Bay Area. I just think about being in that band like, just how much they just ruled Northern California and how they got to do all their gigs. That's why I kind of brought it back. That's what made me sad was like he accomplished his dream. You know, he had the best one of the best rock and roll psychedelic bands and he could tour forever and play whatever music they ever wanted because they were in an improv scene. You know, they had their own audience. Yeah, and he kind of just let it go was, with his health. You know, that's the only thing that kind of freaked me out. Yeah, he was just thriving. I have, you know, you know, certain people like, oh, they're really just doing what they want to do, no matter what it is. They're making a living at it. And he happened to be famous and rich for it, too, which is just icing on the cake. Uh, yeah, I really, like I said, I came around, I used to hate him, but I went to the show. And I was just, there was some moments we saw him in Shoreline where it was just like, okay, I get, I see these a couple of moments where it, the jam was just came together and with some beautiful moments. Still, the drum solos are just insanely boring. <laughs> I dig some funky percussions. I think they're out there. I like Mick. Uh, I, I used I know what you're saying. Some of those long. I used to listen to those old mixtapes and be like, what the fuck? Yeah, I know. I like Bill Kreisman, but Mickey Hart's kind of a kind of a, you know, whatever. I, I, I'm not not. I, he is what he is. And it wouldn't be the band without him. But I think it's it's kind of funny. It's, I think it's cool of, that there's bongos. Somebody's got to play the triangle. Somebody's got to hit the triangle in the middle of Jerry's solo. Yeah. Um. Plus, he's got a nice mustache. You know, you don't see that a lot. The Mickey Hart, the, uh, Mickey Hart's got that sweet stash, or used to. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, so I was surprised how much I, I actually ended up. And I'm, I, you know, I'm a hobby guitar player. So this John Mayer, who I never was crazy about, I was like, oh man, they, it really is a good fit. And they, and the first one I saw, it was a real tight show. Like they didn't do tons of like meandering. It was like start off with truck it. It was just like, it was tight, you know, for a dead show. For a dead uh, show. And, and also they got great tunes. So if they play them, they rip. Yeah, like, oh, uh, I became a brown eyed woman. I love that song. But but also, overall, the main takeaway was the vibe was just the vibe. Like, these old people were dancing and young people are dancing. Everyone's kind of maybe it's because they're on Molly or ass. But the, 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 the general thing uh, was it was a, like a positive vibe. Smile, people just smile and being nice to each other. I thought that was a, a, that's the, always the, good. Yeah, there's never any that's like these uh, cannabis things like these cannabis festivals there's never any drama because everybody's in a good mood and nobody wants to fight and, and yeah, no one's really, shows like no one's really sure of the facts and situations like dude i don't know maybe you're right you know no one's yeah, yeah. <laughs> nobody's a, yeah there's a lot of there's a lot of other realms going on yeah uh yeah they're just like cats you know <laughs> they're just running around it's like yeah. herding cats out there running uh, around killing birds <laughs> Uh, yeah, Deadco, I would say, yeah, John Mayer, uh, what I was going to say, yeah, I was, I'm decent, but I do think he's a master guitar player, don't you think? Yeah, he's like, great, he's, he's, he's uh, you know, like I said, I was like, oh, he's, him and Joe Basamana, another blues guy, they get, there are these white guys who get, who get a lot of attention, but they, but some people say, yeah, they, they lack soul, but I was like, I thought he sounded pretty good to me, just yeah. John Mayer, you know? Yeah, I'm not. Yeah, it's just like technique wise, I think it with stand up comics. And I think you are it's there's you know, you can just tell there's levels. And then there comes a point where somebody becomes a master of their craft, you know, and I think he's like in that, you know, that, there's I, but I bet you there's a dozens that aren't famous that are also masters of the guitar. So many. Well, it's we want we, instrument. We saw on one of the earlier, if not one of the first shows with Dead Co years ago, that that Christmas show. Then we saw him a couple years later at Shoreline. And he was much more integrated in the band. Like he was kind of standing a little out and like dancing. 
being a little more John Mayer at first, and now it was like more seamless on one of the band, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dead is about not much ego. That's what's cool about people that are tripping. They're not, you know, yeah. they're not going, we're number one. They're like, yeah. we're fucking everything. You know, there's, there's no ramp where someone can go out to the middle of the audience, where, oh, he's coming. No one cares. You know, yeah, it's just about the music. Yeah, it, yeah. So it's, I can still hate on certain elements of it. And I still think it's funny, the Grateful Dead lore. But yeah. I, I came away with a, a, a definite respect for a lot of it, you know. Oh, that's dope. Uh, all right, Tony. Love all right, you. well, it's good talking to you and catching up. Okay, we'll talk to you soon. And uh, nice talking to you, Robbie. All right, Tony. Thanks for doing Here. it. Talk to you soon, buddy. Love Bye-bye. You.